I'd like to show you one more game from the Alpha Zero Stockfish match, and then I'm going to take a little break from the uh, Alpha Zero series and move on to other things. But I didn't want to leave you with some losses by Alpha Zero. I wanted to finish with another example of its splendid attacking adventurous style. So this game really impressed me. Alpha Zero with White. Now this was played in the main match where obviously they started from the, the, the normal standard starting position in chess, but Stockfish did not play with an opening book. So it's a very orthodox start and here h6 and d takes c4 are the most popular moves, but bishop e7 played by Stockfish is a very reasonable move and we've actually transposed into a kind of orthodox queen's gambit. So if black castles here or plays knight d7, we have basically an orthodox system. Stockfish plays something a little bit unusual, plays h6 at quite an early stage. And bishop h4 would still maintain you know, the normal opening lines, but here alpha zero very cleverly just nudges the bishop back to f4. So it's a normal uh, bishop f4 system, except c6 has been played at quite an early stage, and also the pawn has advanced to h6. And clearly this is what alpha zero had spied and thought, okay, that gives me a chance. Now, Stockfish's next move, I'm really surprised about. I can't imagine many, well, clued up human players casting in this position because it's quite clear that h6 offers a kind of target for alpha zero. Here, for example, I would say knight d7. Just waiting with the king for a moment would be the most appropriate move. But castles. And queen c2, well, it's quite clear that this is uh, perhaps preparing to go queenside. And cost queenside is possible, but g4, that just takes the fight um, to Stockfish straight away. Well, knight takes pawn, I think, would be pretty disastrous. The rook comes to the open file, and, well, after the, bishop, after the knight retreats, then bishop h6 already looks very strong. Um, it's actually very, very hard to prevent this pawn arriving on, on uh, g5 to open up lines. I mean, this hardly looks very attractive. Uh, the bishop would retreat and then h4. Stockfish grabs a pawn. And that can be captured, of course. But And it's also possible to play g5. But just for a moment, alpha zero waits, actually. He plays a rook g1. We've often seen this in these attacks that... It's very calm about how it blasts through, actually, in a strange way. So this pawn can be protected with b5, but then g5 comes. Knight d5 was played. And g5. On with the show. And the bishop was taken. This could be simply recaptured. But no, we're going straight on um, with g takes h6 and just blasting our way through. Uh, the knight came back to h5 to protect, uh, protect g7 and this was taken. So black is a whole piece up here but again admirable calm by alpha zero. It's just casting queenside preparing later on to bring a second rook into attack and just saying, okay, I'm happy, I've opened some lines. Even though black is a piece up, it's no big deal. I suppose uh, the, the kind of natural way, if, if you can call this position in any way natural, would be for black, or well, the natural defence would be for black to advance the f pawn, either to f6 or f5, to perhaps allow the queen to come across to defend, or maybe simply the rook, comes to f7. This is a real problem, that it, it's very difficult for black's pieces to connect with the defence on the king side. But of course, advancing that f-pawn creates weaknesses, uh, not least 
on e6 and g6. So in this position, queen g6 is already looking very pleasant for white. And instead, f5, well, that weakens this square. So bishop, bishop c4, this, this already looks very nasty as well. And, and maybe just simply bringing this knight round to look at these weakened squares. Connection, as I mentioned, is a huge problem. Black's pieces just can't come over to the defence very easily. So that's a crunch position. Queen a5 played by Stockfish with the intention of bringing the queen over to defend. So that's a kind of natural way to play. Now, doesn't want to exchange. The queen comes back to defend g7. But this queen is going to be in trouble. And this one also threatened. So the king comes to the side. The rook comes over anyway. The knight threatens the rook. And now this is quite funny. Again, alpha zero's play is so direct. Just plays queen f1 with the idea of rook h3. And the best that black can do here is just take as much material as possible, but basically the queen has gone. So this is the game continuation. And rook g7 takes the queen. Now we can just take stock at this point and, and count the material. So you can see that black has two rooks against the queen and, well, three minor pieces each. And white also has a pawn. So queen the pawn against two rooks. So normally um, quite a, a rough material balance there. But of course it all depends on the position of the pieces and you can see that black is still very poorly coordinated. Those rooks can't really do much, they're not working together. And black's king is potentially in trouble. You know, it's a little bit exposed, it needs protection of its pieces. And white has a nice space advantage. But still, there's no immediate way through. But let's see how alpha zero plays. Now this next move, I, I would say, is not at all obvious. Queen d1. Um, we're about to see how this turns out extremely well. This is just about repositioning the queen to a more active square. So black needs to connect here. So it plays knight f6 in order to bring out the bishop here. Knight e5. Splendid square for the knight and queen f3. So that was one of the points of queen d1, just to activate the queen on a better square. So it's pressure here, and one can't rule out a check here at some point. Rook f8 to protect f7. And now this knight swings over to the king side. This is an interesting moment. Again, there's, there's no clear way through for white in this position because the rook does a pretty good job of defending the king. So what does alpha zero do? And we've seen this actually in the very first game that we looked at with alpha zero. It plays a3 and then simply brings its king into the corner or prepares to at some later date anyway. Um, I really like this. It, it values king safety greatly so whenever the position opens up the king can just tuck itself away in the corner by the way we've also seen kasparov do this on many occasions this was his trademark maneuver in the spanish he often well there are a few famous games against karpov where he played h3 in the world championship matches h3 and then king on g1 to h2 to get the king off the back rank then there was no counter attack and then full steam ahead well, if black sits there, then white will build up very much as in the game. <clears throat> um, I mean, I'm not sure, with, with hindsight, I'm not sure that this is the best idea. Stockfish throws these queenside pawns forward, but this creates more weaknesses. I mean, perhaps you could say that these, these pawns are going to be weak at some point anyway, but... Um, 
Well, we're going to see that a5 and c6 come under fire at a later stage. And in combination with white's pressure in the middle, kingside, well, all over the board, actually, uh, the weakness of these pawns actually proves just the, the last straw that, that, that breaks the camel's back. So the king is tucked away on a2, and black can do nothing but wait in this position, just shuffling the king back and forth. Rook g5, that rook is really not going anywhere at all. And the queen prepares to come over to the queen side, and also, as we'll see a little bit later, it uh, makes makes room for the for the f pawn to advance as well. But some nice little shuffling here. White is completely secure on the king side, can't be touched at all, and white has made room for the queen and knight to attack here. And black forces the issue now after knight g4, but you know, there's, there's not a lot that white can do in this position. Here, if this pawn is taken, then the queen can bounce back and cause some difficulties here. So that was attacking the bishop. The queen bounces back, attacking the knight. And then bishop takes, and magically... This rook is um, unguarded once the bishop has left d8, and black's position is collapsing there. So in this position, queen takes c6 just happened. Rook h7. The queen attacks the bishop, which has to go to the back rank. And again, this queen comes to uh, f4, and this is very embarrassing. Attacking this and attacking this. So the rook steps to the side preventing that capture. Bishop d1 looks very risky to put the knight in on h2 somehow. Um, the, the knight is trapped there, so it came back. And h4, so very controlled by alpha zero. It, everything is protected. It's snaffled the pawn on the queen side and now just secures everything on the king side. And black's piece is completely hemmed in. Again, a, a hallmark of Alpha Zero's play that it increases its own activity, but likes to cramp its opponent's pieces. And now here's a really nice breakthrough. D5. If this is taken, this did not happen, then it just opens up the position beautifully. Let's give a check. So checking the king and threatening the knight so that forces the knight back and then knight f5 comes to a wonderful square and actually black has virtually no moves no certainly no sensible moves in this position uh, this this rook can't move this one can only shuffle back and forth the bishop has to keep protecting the knight which is pinned the king can't move well it's quite clear that this is um terrible situation for black and, and ultimately will be lost. So after d5, rook e8 played. d6, beautiful pass pawn there. And white continues the advance. This is pretty miserable. And that's rather awkward. Bishop attacks the queen. No drama, it just goes back knight here. And now after knight e4, the game was terminated. Um, I, I think it's it's plain to see that, that black is, is not really getting out of this one. Let's just take a very quick look and see what happens if bishop d8. Here's a nice move. Queen h1, protecting the pawn. And now the knight comes in here and this queen is ready to swoop across the other side of the board. So that protects the back rank and now knight b7. You can see things are pretty grim. Knight takes bishop threatened and then queen takes knight. In the meantime, a5 is also on prize. Well, basically this, this knight on b6 is um, in terrible trouble. You can see how it was really worth it for white 
for Alpha Zero to play the king to this completely safe spot before it embarked on the final advance through the middle of the board. Um, just an, a, a superb game, absolutely superb. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this series on, on Alpha Zero. And don't forget, if you want to check out the full playlist of videos, then you can find the link up there. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, then click down there, free to subscribe. And uh, if you want to support us, then do check out patreon.com or PayPal as well if you want to make a, a once-off donation. That's great. And um, don't forget, forget to like, comment, and as I said, subscribe. Thanks a lot.